Hey, what's up YouTube? In this problem, we're going to find the interval and radius of convergence of this power series. Um, typically in these problems, when you do these, you start by using the ratio test. So let's do it. Let's start by using the ratio test. So the ratio test says if you take the limit as n goes to infinity of the absolute value of a sub n plus 1 over a sub n. And if this limit is less than 1, then we get what's called absolute convergence. Okay. So what we do is we take this limit and then we, we set it less than one, we force it, right? And then from there we solve for the interval of convergence. The interval of convergence is the set of all x's for which the series uh, converges. So to do this, we have a limit, so we'll write that again. And then the way I do these is I first just replace all of the n's with m plus ones. That's what a sub m plus one means, okay? So it's one over, and then parentheses, m plus one squared plus n plus 1, okay, and then times, times, actually, you can put this upstairs, right? This is the same as being up here, so this is 4x minus 1 to the n plus 1, right? This, this can be written with this piece up top, so it's the same thing, okay? It's the same thing. So all that's written on the board so far is a sub n plus 1. Now we have to divide by a sub n. When you divide, you multiply by the reciprocal, right? So this is times... So you flip it, so we're just going to flip this thing. So it's n squared plus n over parentheses 4x minus 1 to the n. Boom, beautiful stuff. This is equal to. So we basically plugged in n plus 1 for all of the n's we got this. Then we divided by a sub n, so we just ended up flipping it. This is equal to the limit as n approaches infinity. So now we can simplify things a little bit. Okay, so let me do some of the simplifications on the side. After you do a couple of these, you'll get really good at it. So we have this over this. So we have 4x minus 1 to the n plus 1 over 4x minus 1 to the n. So what you can do here is you can break it out. It's 4x minus 1 to the n times 4x minus 1 to the 1 over 4x minus 1 to the n. Boom! They cancel. So you just get 4x minus 1. And notice I didn't drop the absolute value. The reason you can't drop it is because you don't know what x is. x could be positive, it could be negative, so you can't drop it. If you only had n's, you could drop it, right? Because n is a positive integer, so there's no problems. But x, x is a real number. It could be negative, so we have to be wary. And then everything else is okay. We keep, we keep everything else. So here we have parentheses, n squared plus n. And then down here we have n plus 1 squared plus n plus 1. All right, you can show an extra step here. You can pull the 4x minus 1 outside of the limit if you wanted to because it's independent of n, right? It doesn't, doesn't, it's, a, it's something else, right? There's no n here. Um, but this limit here, this limit here is 1. And the reason is um, it, it's the ratio of the leading coefficients. Here the leading coefficient is n squared. And here, if you multiply this out, you also get n squared. So it's like n squared over n squared. So it's like 1 over 1, right? So this whole limit is 1. So this is equal to the absolute value of 4x minus 1. And you want this to converge, so you set it less than 1. So now what you do is you solve this inequality. So when you solve this inequality, you have, let me write it again over here, 4x minus 1, less than 1. When you drop the absolute value, you have to put a plus and a minus. Okay, so 4x minus 1, greater than 1, less than 1, greater than negative 1. And you add 1 to all the sides, right? So it would be um, plus, plus 2, plus 1, plus 1, plus 1. So it's 0, 0, less than 4x, less than 2, divide by 4, divide by 4. So we get 0 over 4 is 0, less than x. I'm kind of fasting, my, my camera is going to die. Less than 1 half. Hope it doesn't die like at the very end, right when I'm about to finish. <laughs> right, so it, don't forget to put a 1 and a negative 1. Then you just solve for x and you get here. Almost done, right? Almost done. Now we just got to check the endpoints. So how do you do that? So I'm going to erase all of this. So to check the endpoints, what you do is you take these numbers and you plug them back in here, right? Back in here. So let's check zero. And you have to use all those series tests. So check. It's beautiful. I love series. So put the zero here. So you would get infinite sum. N equals 1 to infinity. 1 over n squared plus n. When you put a zero here, it goes away, right? You just get negative 1 to the n. And this is going to converge. This is a convergent alternating series. How do I know that? Just practice. But let's do it. Let's go through the motions. So the alternating series says that your a sub n is the non-alternating part. So in the alternating series test, your a sub n is always the non-alternating part. So you set that equal to a sub n. And then you just have to satisfy two conditions. One, the limit is 0. Two, it's not increasing. 
So the limit is zero, we'll just say it. It's pretty easy to see, right? The, it's a fraction and the bottom's getting really big. And it's not increasing. If you wanted to show it's not increasing, you would take the derivative and show it's less than or equal to zero. We'll just say it's not increasing. It is not increasing. I'd say, why don't you just say decreasing? Well, not increasing is almost the same. Not increasing means it's getting smaller or staying the same, right? A little bit tricky. So decreasing is getting smaller, not increasing is getting smaller or staying the same. Uh, very similar. So both conditions were satisfied. So converges by the alternating series test. So what does that mean? That means we include zero in our interval of convergence. So, so far, we have a bracket at zero. If this would have diverged, we would have had a parenthesis. All right, now we have to check one half. It's going a little bit fast. We're going to put a one half in here, so we have infinite sum. n equals one to infinity. One over n squared plus n. Let's see, when you put a one half here, you get four times one half minus one to the n. I don't know if you can see that high, so let me do it down here. You have 4 times 1 half minus 1 to the n. So 2 minus 1, right? Yeah, 4 over 2 is 2, so 2 minus 1 to the n. So 1 to the n is 1, so it goes away. So it just completely goes away, right? So you have this. This is going to converge as well, right? Uh, you can do it a couple ways. You can use limit comparison or you can use direct comparison. Let's use direct comparison. So when we use direct comparison, we take this and we show it's less than In this case, less than 1 over n squared, right? Because this fraction is smaller than this fraction because this number, n squared plus n, is bigger than n squared. And then we'll explain why the sum of these terms converges. And so you compare it to the terms of something that will converge. So obviously, in this case, this behaves like a p-series. So we compare it to 1 over n squared. We compare it to a p-series. So this converges by the p-test. Since, and specify why it converges. So p is equal to 2, which is bigger than 1. Your p test says it converges if it's bigger than 1, diverges if it's less than or equal to 1. Lots of knowledge, lots of mathematics. So our series, so our OG series, OG means original, this one, converges by the direct comparison test. Okay, I'm going kind of fast because my battery's dying. So it converges, so we have another bracket. So this is the interval of convergence. So recap, you use the ratio test, you find your, 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 your endpoints, and you plug them back in, and you just use your regular series test. If it converges, you put a bracket. If it doesn't, you put a parenthesis. What about the radius? I almost forgot. Oh my god, the radius, the radius. There's a couple ways to find the radius. I like to think about it. It's fun. So think about 4x minus 1, right? Remember, a power series looks like this, right? A power series centered at C looks like this. Right, so here we have 4x minus 1 to the n. So check this out, you can pull out the 4. Oh, skills! Right, pretty clever trick. And then this is 4 to the n, x minus 1 fourth to the n. So you see your center is 1 fourth. Right, your center is 1 fourth. You say, okay, so here's 0, here's 1 half, here's 1 fourth. So your radius, well, how do you get from 1 fourth to 1 half? You add 1 fourth. So that's how I do 